Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I am your host, as always, Jay Villain, aka That Villain Jay. And tonight, with me, as always, is my co host, the numbest of skulls. Numb hey guys, skull. doing? Back from Philly, fresh, rested. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Very rested. He yes. took world champion at Philly. <laughs> He's got his trophy. Hold up that trophy, numbskull, that you won at Philly. It's I didn't I didn't get a trophy, but I, oh. I did get some packs. <laughs> oh, you did get some packs. Okay. So yeah. Um, in case you don't know, Magic Con Philly was uh last weekend. I believe it was the what's that, the seventeenth, eighteenth? Uh February. Uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th. I was yeah. there on the eighteenth mainly and then i i uh, kind of hung out in philly for a little bit on the 19th and then left fantastic so we had some black council representation we had some villains up there too paradabo and all them um so we had some great stuff we had some good times it was it was good times all around you had a good time up yeah. there all in all what would you oh, yeah. rate, I had, rate I, it i had a great time um <laughs> only thing that that what that would have made, made it better is if i could have stayed a little longer had a little more time you know but okay um so yeah, I thought it was great overall. Um, I, I won. I won my standard event. Oh, fantastic! That I played in. Yep, and uh, didn't lose a single game. I, I two would three times in a row for all my matches. Fantastic! Um, yeah, I was the only person who didn't lose. Wow! Um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty world cool. champion. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> it, there weren't that many people there and you know like there there were other events that were a little bit more competitive like obviously the 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 pro tour was there and i'm not i am assuming standard they gave you like a rickety cardboard box and yeah well what they did is they had like a like a ticket system it was kind of like kind of like you're at an arcade oh okay Um, and you know what i mean and you get you get your your tickets or your tokens or whatever Mm -hmm. um and then uh you know, I got forty eight hundred for winning, so wow. it basically got me like ten set boosters and one or one uh, draft booster. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, from that I opened up some pretty I opened up some pretty good cards from those packs, so I was happy about that. Okay. Um, the packs that I got from that and the uh, the packs that they give you for um like for getting like like one of the the day passes or weekend badges i yeah. I, I just got a regular day pass all add up all that it kind of covered my expenses for what i paid to be there and to compete basically okay. so that was cool um obviously i had a great time hung out with like all the Ma- magic jank fam and then uh hung out with paradabo as well uh, East Philly was there you know saw some other creators yeah um played i played commander like with like people for pretty much like the first time so that was really sweet okay i got my ass kicked in some commander and it did make me want to like get a commander deck though so i'll probably do that eventually here um sweet yeah. sweet so it was a good time and it was really cool like you could literally sit in the in the conference or in, in the convention center go on like the second or third floor people were up there playing magic till like like 1 a.m just wow. like casual games yeah you could just yeah there was there. i saw that there was just games everywhere there was just games that like yeah. you could find a game yeah you could like you could just walk up to people and be like hey can i get a game with you guys and they'd be like sure and yeah. it, it looked like there yeah. was some like secret draft on the floor that we were on like right at the end because all these like judges walked up with all these players and it looks like maybe they had like extra packs or something oh and interesting they did some kind of like secret draft it looked like yeah some kind of like secret like sealed pool kind of thing going on so that was interesting um i think when, when we were playing commander cgb was like two tables behind us yeah i um, saw some pictures of that mm-hmm. so um so that was interesting and then uh yeah so th- there were some you know obviously there were some like you know big big people there and then uh yeah it was a fun time there's really cool cosplays um and yeah, I ate some phenomenal food in Philly. I think I sent you some of the photos of the stuff that I was eating. It's, oh, of had course. Like the, the two best, the two best cheesesteaks in my life, easily. Um, if you guys ever need to know where to get a cheesesteak? Just ask me. I'll, I'll let you know like three or four different spots that'll that'll blow your that'll knock your socks off. Um, Fantastic. But yeah, it was great. Uh, it was a really good time. Um, maybe in the um, 
council discord uh today or tomorrow or thursday whatever i'll post um my polls from the the um like like what i got oh okay so would you say that that stuff, what I put, what I that's the the cool stuff that you got from M- the philly con will maybe be exclusive mm-hmm. to the discord precisely oh so i don't think i've i don't think i've shown my I think I've like said a couple of the things I pulled, but I don't think I've shown anybody yet. And like nobody's seen the art, nobody's you know seen whatever. So yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the council, and only the council members will see it. Oh, and if somebody wanted to join the council Discord, what could they do? <laughs> uh, all they got to do go to our Patreon, um, and in this Patreon here that that we have, um, basically where we're at is all you got to do there'll be a link in this uh in this video you go to our yeah. patreon you can subscribe and then we'll give you access to the um to the council members only discord you become a council member by you know um joining our patreon for as little as a dollar a month as little, little as a dollar, a dollar a month, month. yeah that's a good a value month, episode it's pretty good value we try to give you exclusive stuff and you know little bit of inside inside access when i when we do things like this and you know stuff that p- other people won't see um and then obviously like you know we have our own kind of like little council community building in there we have 17 patrons as it stands now mm-hmm. um so you know that's obviously pretty legit so yeah we have uh i actually have the list up we can go i can go through and uh oh, who, who are our lovely our who are our lovely here. sponsors <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, King Leo, um, Elvan Breams, Zylo, Jamel, Stumpha, T Rex, Magic Shark, Lord Egypticus, as Jay says it, uh, Satanosaurus, yep, Cassius, Nickel Nuts, H Man, Ulfir, uh, Dantec, um, Clever, Bloodsheaf, and of course, Paradabo, one of our, uh, one of our, our, biggest supporters and one of our uh one of our uh good 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 friends on here and i got to spend a lot of par- time with paradabo this weekend we had a we had a great time we were kind of you know walking around just just doing stuff playing casual games together um and yeah played commander with paradabo he was hanging out with us we ate some pizza crack packs hung out it was a really good time oh fantastic time, so. that's wonderful yeah, so did you did uh did you see anybody wearing the um black council hats exclusive black council merch hats um i think paradabo didn't get his hat until he got back ah from uh t- to his his homeland from mm. the the magic con i think mm. he i think he said it arrived like the day that he left and he had already left oh before okay that's too bad um, but he yeah but when i got there he was wearing his official uh numbskull t-shirt Oh, fantastic! Um, yeah, so he he did he did represent there, um, yeah. And then I was I was wearing the uh, the the Magic Jank team gave us some T shirts, so I wanted to wear their shirt and kind of represent them in that process. Plus, I oh. walked around a lot in the beginning trying to find where everything was and got a look. The the first shirt got a little sweaty, so I ah I yeah. As it happens, <laughs> as one there's does. a lot of walking around, man. And, as and one I, does, and as you. As you can see from my general body type, I don't walk a lot. No, no, I'm not built for walking either. Believe me, I understand. <laughs> and dude, there's like three floors of like a lot of walking. And you had to go to all three floors to really do oh, what, you, wow. what you wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can and imagine. Yeah. So like you're usually chilling on the second floor for the most part. But then when you got to go actually do your event, your events on the first floor. And it's like pretty out of the way. Thankfully, there's there's escalators, um, but still, you know, it's 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 a lot of walking, no matter which way you spin it. So, it was it was a great time though. I had I had an incredible time, and I would absolutely do it again. And I would probably go to any Magic Con or like SCG Con, whatever. That's yeah. like that. That's like that close to me. You know, within yeah, within yeah. a couple hours, I'd probably do it. Yeah. Yeah, I I would like to eventually. I got to figure out how to disguise myself enough. Uh, I heard they're talking about. I know you're in Michigan. I heard they're talking about Minneapolis as the next one. Minneapolis, yeah, I maybe. Well, I'm not in. I'm not. I'm from Michigan. I don't live in Michigan anymore. 
Um, oh, you don't? Okay, okay. No, I don't. I, I am there frequently because that's where my family lives, but I'm not actually currently mm-hmm. there. Um, okay. But uh, there's a few places. Are they talking about Minneapolis? I think they're talking about Wisconsin as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, was, yeah. I was thinking about it. I You know, I, I don't know if I could get maybe get a creator pass i might do something with that mm-hmm. i don't know we'll see what cool. happens uh, you know uh, it's weird to, i don't know if, to me maybe maybe you feel similar it feels weird to ask for one i don't know i'm 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 like too <laughs> i'm like too humble i don't know i'm like i don't need this no who am i i'm just some yeah. asshole i mean um dude if, if, if you can get a chance to get some free shit just... yeah i know I, I i saw what i saw what they gave the the creators and they yeah. really they really hooked it up like uh, i know i was talking about the collector boosters but even just the secret lair stuff some mm-hmm. of the secret lair stuff was like over a hundred dollars and and wow. just that so like you know you you buy that weekend pass it's like 160 for a weekend pass you know the the free stuff they gave you as a creator the monetary value in that alone already surpasses it and then that doesn't count the stuff that you might open in the in those packs yeah that you get in, in your collector boosters and this and that so if you yeah. have a good if you open a couple nice collector boosters you know then you're talking about really getting some serious money and this was this was a good set to do that you know because of some, course there's some cool there's some high value shit in the set you know yeah, yeah. so my um so this was a good one snow as another streamer um mm-hmm. as you may know my my significant mm-hmm. other she bought some boxes uh she works at a big box store so so somebody got her some boxes for cheap of some not not the full size like display boxes but the the bundle boxes gift boxes yeah, yeah the, the gift boxes so, that, that come with with your 20 sided die mm-hmm. and the packs yep. it comes with some art and stuff like that so she bought mm-hmm. one for mm-hmm. her one for me i haven't opened mine i'm gonna open mine in stream hers she opened up and got all kind of stuff mm-hmm. um she got she got a uh geez she got a what was the crap that she got? She got a sword of Forge and Forge and Home or whatever it's called. She got mm-hmm. a uh, um, Akaya. She got a Gisa, a Glissa Sunslayer. She Glizzy got Slayer, nice. Yeah, she got a Glizzy Slayer. She got uh, she got all kind of stuff. Her pack opening was was just nuts. Was just That's legit. I, I got a I, I got I got the 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 Rot Priest in mind, which. Yeah, I, I at the time I didn't because I I go to Target and get one. Mm-hmm. I, that, that's where I get mine is at Target. I go to Target and get one, just kind of whenever the, the set comes out. I used to get a box every time, and I realized that's like kind of throwing some money away. But just mm-hmm. to still be able to say I opened something, I, I go get one of those, and they're like forty bucks or forty five mm-hmm. bucks or whatever. And yeah, I got I got a, I got a rot priest in mine, and I guess that's like a twenty dollar card right now. I didn't know. Yeah, that. it's probably going for a lot. Oddly enough, the oh she got an alternate art Tyvar as well. She got the ink art. Ooh, that's good. Tyvar is heavily used right now, so I think Mm -hmm. he's got some good value. Tyvar is good. So she did some stuff. I'm eager to open them. I'm probably going to do a stream of just opening some packs of of mine up. Sounds good. Um, So that should be pretty fun um, overall. Mm -hmm. The uh, let's see, what else was I going to say? Yeah. So that's awesome. I'm glad you had a good time there. I mean, it's I I do want to get some con stuff um maybe one day the black council will be invited to do a panel who knows who yeah knows? we can we can we can set it up that way i think we can like apply to be mm-hmm. um a, a, like in a panel or whatever or like at, at the very least like maybe if we get like enough merch set up we could at least be like a like a, like have like a vendor thing yeah you know what i mean so have a have a thingy so yeah we'll see yeah, that. We, if people want to see some stuff like that as we grow you know yeah yeah we can definitely explore that and i guess Another thing they did there that I'm sure everybody saw is they uh, they started revealing and all the Pro Tour players were like, oh. kind of like what the hell, guys? We're trying to play Magic right now. But they yeah. started revealing new cards. And they're like, hey, um, we need to know about these cards, but we're also trying to focus on like a really big event. So can you just like wait? <laughs> yeah. uh, but knowing, knowing Wizards, they could not wait. And uh, yeah, they have... Um, yeah, they have uh, some new cards that came out, and they are quite interesting. So um, when we're talking about the new set, we're talking about post All Will Be One. We are talking about yeah. March, March of, of the, the Machine. The yeah. new and upcoming set is coming out, and we've already yeah. had some stuff spoiled and revealed. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, I, I have this list up now from uh, Mythic Spoiler. Um, and oddly enough, this new set is being called Mom, March mm. with Machines. Mommy shit. <laughs> Mommy Ellish. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's it's interesting. Um, cool thing about this one is they do, this is uh, going to be the set where they, whomever wins the world championship, uh, I think it was the world championship, like, not this past one, but the one before. They usually run, like, like it usually happens like about a little after or a little bit over like like a year after but shota yasuka i believe that's his name is that the guy who won i don't remember um or no no you yuta takahashi yuta takahashi it was when it was when everybody was only playing um is it turns decks <laughs> oh yeah 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 two that, years ago that world yeah that world yeah. championship like two rotations ago but in like october or like September or something like that, like right before rotation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Yuta Takahashi, he was the world champion, so that's when he gets his own card. Kind of like... Um, okay. Uh, like, um, was it PVR or PVDDR, whatever? PVDDR, whatever, like that. yeah. Yeah, he, he had his own card. That was Elite Spellbinder. Mm, that's so, right. Yeah, he had the world yeah, champion so, Spellbinder. Yeah, so Yuta gets uh, his own card this time. Um i thought it was funny they made him a fairy <laughs> I like, yeah i um, saw you that do not make me a fairy dude this yeah <laughs> did, did but, he ask for that or did they just I do it know. i think they just did it but I, I know that they tell you i think what the card's gonna be but then you get influence on like how the art is implemented okay. if that makes sense yeah so the art is pretty sweet and the, it, you can totally tell that it's him yeah you know what i mean and like i guess you guys will see it um but yeah we can we can go down the list here because i guess so we're, yeah we're, i we're actually have you guys. have the uh whatchamacallit the site pulled up what site do you have pulled up yeah i i have the mythic spoiler website pulled mythic up. spoiler i think i actually have that open i have mtg goldfish open i'll send you the link um okay. that i'm using just so we can look at the same thing okay. there we go Boop -a -doop -a -doo. this one looks nice it's just easy for me easy to read and oh i mean there's only what 10, 11 cards, and then some reprinted lands, it looks like. Okay, let's go there. Yes, we want to open it up. So we will open this up onto our little side view here. Sure. And we will do that. And then we will say Mythic Spoiler, and we'll go whoop. There we go. Nice. Yeah, okay. All right, so we have first we see Chandra, Actually, let me zoom in real quick. Yeah. Um, or if you want to F11 that one for full screen. On the, yeah, let me do that real quick. Browser. Let me do... Boof. Actually, let me get out of that and zoom. Boom. Zoom, zoom. Boom. There we go. Looks good. Okay. You want me to do the first one? Yeah, absolutely. Miss Chandra. Chandra Hope's Beacon. She's kind of like burning into the text. It's a little hard to see, but I yeah. just guessed that that's what it was saying. But... <laughs> um, yeah, six mana planeswalker. So we, you know, we've kind of known Chandra to be range between three and six mana, um, but it, this is another Chandra. We got a new Chandra in standard now. Mm -hmm. um, her static ability, oh, notably five loyalty as well. So a little bit of lower value. You don't get your mana spent to loyalty one to one ratio. So we'll kind of see if she has a upside. You know that compensates for that. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. Oh, okay. Well, all right. On the, upside on the first sentence, I guess. Um, you may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. Okay, so there's immediate upside. Yes. And I guess that's probably fine for her to have five loyalty. Um, but you can also do a plus two to add two mana in any combination of colors. That's pretty legit. Not just red like she would normally give. Uh, plus one to exile the top five cards of your library. So then your next turn, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiled cards. Mono, red, burn, where you at? Uh, minus X, she will deal X damage to each of up to two targets. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I don't, I don't know how, um, how do I say it without sounding bad? Slow red cards. How do we feel about slow red cards? yeah uh, you know what i mean yeah um the only thing i i see here is that mono red control is like kind of becoming a thing mm -hmm. 
So in a way, it's getting better for a more mid-rangey red game. But I will say that a six mana red spell is a little rough. Could be played on what? Turn five, Turn four, maybe if you five have a ramp. With like Fable. Mm -hmm. If you're really trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I like it. I mean, I think it's pretty sweet to be honest with you, man. It's um, you know, copying copying the spells is lit, and I, I can see maybe it goes in like is it also, not just red. You know, um, like one of those spell decks, uh, even though even that like um, the arcane bombardment decks, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that, like a super janky, even though that with arcane bombardment's a little rough because you're talking about like relying on two six, ma uh, two six mana things to to be your engine. That's a little, yeah. a little difficult. Um, but I mean, dude, imagine being able to resolve that and copy and invoke the next turn. It just feels great, but. You're, it's it's kind of late in the game when you're doing it, unfortunately. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Like, who who wants that? Who wants that much? Who 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 wants that much? Uh, uh, who 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 wants that much mana that late in the game? Like, who needs that much mana? You need two mana on turn yeah. seven. You you need to cast a nine. I guess it does give you a portal, but I mean, there's easier ways yeah. to get a portal. Yeah, you're talking about ramping into a portal a little quicker. That's that's a thing. Maybe like commander mana fixing too. Maybe it's a better commander card. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, there are as you can see in this page, there are some cards that have like a three different mana value, three, four, five different mana value um you know in their casting costs mm -hmm. so that's that's noteworthy too um with you know that it provides some some sort of mana fixing but you do got to get kind of late in the game and maybe your your mana is already fixed by then anyway so we'll have to wait and see if uh if there's a good way to implement her or if there's maybe something reduces the cost of uh planeswalker spells you know what i mean who knows yeah, yeah. So we'll see. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, here yeah, we have. There's, there's another bomb just lurking. Oh God! Here we have this freaking guy, <laughs> Ginger Taxes. <sighs> he's just, he's not Ginger Taxes. Anything. He's not progress trying. He's just Ginger Taxes. Uh, two blue and three Praxian Praetor, five five War two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with a mana value three or greater, draw a card. Exile Ginger Taxes for three and one blue return it transformed it turns into this insane thing i don't think we have i have to click on it there it is the great synthesis uh it turns into a saga that lets you draw cards equal the number of cards in your hand you have no maximum hand size return all non-phyrexian creatures to their owner's hand then you may cast any number of spells in your hand without paying their mana cost come on <laughs> come on what the hell is that come and on it has ward yeah, it says, uh, this is literally, somebody left a comment, this is literally busted. <laughs> as long as you have seven cards in your can, you can just keep re re reactivating until the last trigger resolves. Since it just returns to the front side, you can easily leave it to four mana because you just played all your best spells for free. And then you draw at least seven more cards for four mana and don't have to discard. That on top of the enchantment being one of the hardest cards type to hit with removal on the front side, having some minor protection. Even to get rid of it, they have already electrolyzed 70 cards to ward it off. Um... Yeah, and somebody says, "Well, you're already winning if you've got it off." Yeah, but that's not the point. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it's uh, it's just something else to deal with. The problem is, and I've talked about the blue bomb, uh, mm -hmm. the the nature of the bomb, um, the nature of the bomb makes it impossible to actually deal with the bomb. So, blue yeah. cards yeah, that are exactly. ultra powerful make it impossible to deal with blue cards like that are ultra powerful like a red card that's super powerful doesn't make it impossible to destroy the red card blue cards do that so mm -hmm. that's why i'm always mm -hmm. kind of not about them so Damn. i personally won't be playing it i know some people will and it's going to make my life a living hell but absolutely and i don't know i mean i guess the something that's good about it is that it 
encourages blue players to play permanence, which I guess is kind of good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than just like island go, island go, island go. But yeah, not not like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's my issue. But anyway, not to dwell too much on that. We know it's ridiculous. We're going to have to deal with it. And, you know, here we are. But anyway, the next one. Bring back Heliot. Oh, yeah. Heliot, the Radiant Dawn. Uh, two colorless, two white. It, we have we have a god card again, which is pretty cool. Haven't had god cards for a minute. And an enchantment creature at that. Feels like because it is the a March of the Machines, it's like the final part of this war. Um, you got Brothers War, you got All Will Be One, and then you have the March of the Machines. And that's like the... This is like the final culmination of all right guys it's going down everybody's here and we're either fighting them off or we're all dying or we're all for we're all going for Exian, or the the multiverses just get blown up whatever <clears throat> heli is even here to stop it so here we are uh etb return target enchantment card that isn't a god card from your graveyard your hand not that crazy notably He's also not indestructible. One of the yeah. first times you've probably seen Heliod uh, come down as a god card and not have the indestructible. Not be indestructible, yeah. Um, be it whether he needs devotion or not to be a creature. He This time he's a creature right off the bat, but notably not uh, not indestructible. Now he has the, he has his transform thing as well. Yeah. And uh, guess what? Guess what happens he turns when he transforms? Into, he turns, he got completed. He gets completed. And you can basically, uh, you can complete them in the game almost, basically, for yeah. uh, uh, three colorless and either pay your two life for the Phyrexian mana, or if you are you happen to be playing blue, and there you are. You may cast spells as though they had flash. Sick. Uh, spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card your opponents have drawn this turn. Kind of legit. I, I, I think it's like, that ability seems like kind of niche. But it's also pretty uh, pretty sweet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also just like having a Phyrexian God is just, that's awesome. Just to say, yeah, there's a Phyrexian God now. Especially Heliod, who's an asshole. Mm -hmm. And Elspeth <laughs> yeah. is going to have to really, really kill him now. Because she's got to put in work. Oh, listen, she's going to she's gonna get Doomslayer up in this motherfucker. She's, <laughs> she is going to be ripping and tearing in. Uh, so maybe there's... Maybe there's going to be some crazy angels. Like maybe Avacyn makes a comeback or something. I don't know. Some people are saying that Eldrazi are coming in. Well, they did announce today in the thing that there's going to be in the next set. Or is it March of the Machines? There's going to be an Eldrazi um, Planeswalker pre-constructed uh, commander deck. Yeah. So, you know, they did, course, Eldrazi deck. they did course through the Blind Eternities, so they're kind of fucking up the Blind Eternities. That's where the Eldrazi live, so maybe they're upset okay. about it. Maybe they don't like the fact yeah. that Phyrexians are coming through. They got something to say. They're like, hey, we're actually more powerful than you guys. Don't don't forget. Yeah. Put some respect on our name. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. But yeah, then the next one's kind of interesting, too. We're talking about, like, almost like, you so know, we, we have a nice, them. yeah, we have a couple of cycle of these cards with Tali and the Gitrog monster. You'll see we have Drana and Linvala. We have Yargle and Multani. Um, uh, and we have Galta and Marvin. So this looks like legendary creature team ups to fight mm -hmm. everyone. Everyone is teaming um, um, to do stuff, you know, so. And they're kind of like unsuspecting com companions too. Yeah, know? they're kind of they're kind of not exp yeah they're kind of weird team ups they're odd uh but yeah go ahead go ahead if you want to read it read oh okay on. get talia and get rog is uh abzan <laughs> yeah <laughs> green black white uh four four first strike death touch human frog horror you may play additional lands in each of your turn. Creatures, uh, creatures and non-basic lands your opponent controls enter tapped whenever talia and get log around to attack uh, sacrifice creature land then draw a card so they kind of synthesized uh all of the abilities all into one Tali is kind of lockout mm -hmm. and get rogs kind of crazy mm -hmm. nonsense that he does so and ramp and they're kind of like that and, and ramp sacrifice. and death touch mm -hmm. and first strike because she's a first striker so 
you know, mm-hmm. um, they've kind of tried to synthesize them together. I mean, that's a that, that's I mean, aside from it being absent, that's a lot of abilities for um, uh, that's for a lot mana. of abilities for four mana, really. A four four first mm-hmm. strike death touch with three other that's abilities. already like really good, yeah, yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I, I, mm-hmm. I like it. I'm, it's definitely, I'm glad that they're doing triple color because I always love triple color support. As I always say, it's one of the more interesting aspects of magic. Yeah, and I think they were talking about in this set, they might be finishing the uh, the the Triome cycle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we are getting that too. Now, I, I know we don't see them yet in the, in the list, but like, it, I think they're saying this is where they do it. So that would mean an Abzan Triome uh, a Mardu Triome, you know, all that other stuff. So that's that's noteworthy as well. It's something to keep an eye on, you know. Um, but yeah, the next one here, Fairy Mastermind. This is the Yuta Takahashi card. Uh, so it's just a fairy, two mana, two one, flash flying. Um, it is a rare. Whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. And then you can pay four for each player to draw a card. So decent. Um, it's just your, you know, just the, st- the 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 card that they give you uh, as as like the winner of the world championships, they put you on the card. So this, yeah, that was that is Yuta's card. They made him a fairy. Um, I know he does play blue, so that's reasonable. That you know what I mean. That that's there. Um, there there are fairy decks. Um, just kind of like those blue those blue decks in general with like tons of card draw. He could probably fit into one of those. So I'm I, I see that. I see that card seeing play, you know. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, classic fairy rogue kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, they they did put his likeness on there. I mean, it really does look like him. It did, and he's got blue eyes. That's pretty cool too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we have some black here. here this is go. some madness here. Breaching the multiverse. Uh, two black and five. That's a big boy. Each player mills 10 cards for each player. Choose a Planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Then each player you control becomes... Each creature you control becomes a Phyrexian addition to its other types. So, obviously with a mill deck, you're going to get Planeswalkers. It's kind of a Planeswalker stealing mill situation. I think it probably needs... um, I think it probably needs blue i think this definitely is a demir yeah. I, it's hard it would be hard to play this in just mono black well don't forget it also says creature or planeswalker so you can get creatures from your opponents as well choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard yeah um so it does i mean yeah i mean it definitely works it's a it's a hard spell to resolve and in a yeah. one-on-one game it's not great but i see it being like a really big thing in commander I see I see Commander loving this card. Yeah. Definitely. Um yeah, so well, you know, we already know invoke is kind of a hard spell to resolve uh right now in the first place. So something like this for even more mana, okay, it's even harder to resolve. So eh, maybe in standard you don't play it. Uh maybe it it's, could be like a crazy draft bomb, you know, uh, like a like 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 that kind of finisher. Um and then Commander could be pretty good. Um, all right, we have Drana and Linvala. This is some angel action going on, but also Drana is a vampire, Linvala is an angel. Yes. So we've got, so this is cool. This is something we haven't really seen much, uh, well, ever really, where they mix these two into the same card. Um, so it's two white, a black, and a colorless. This creature is considered a vampire angel. It's a 3 4 flying in vigilance. <clears throat> activated abilities of, of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. That's noteworthy. It shuts off uh, Fable or Reflections of Kiki Jiki. Um, it shuts down all of the, what do they call them, Thanes? Yes. The, yeah, it the shuts down all the abilities of the Thanes. Yes. Um, shuts down Gix. Shuts down a lot. Anything that's like pay something to do this or tap something to do this. Yeah. Your opponent can't do it anymore. So that's... Yeah. That's like pretty legit, and I can see that being like maybe an Esper thing, maybe like an Orzhov control thing, um, but also you get a decent body out of it. Uh, 
Strong and Linvala has all activated abilities of all creatures your opponents control. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate those abilities. So not only do you shut down their fable, uh, this also becomes a fable. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that's that's pretty legit. I see that. Um, I see that being a pretty awesome card. You probably just main deck it because, like, you don't have to put it in the sideboard because Fable is such a commonly played card. You just play it in your main deck. You don't even have to worry about, oh, I'm going to put it in my sideboard when I see Fable. No, you're just going to see Fable, like, almost every game anyway, so just play it. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I feel. So, great card. Uh, I love that Drana and Linvala are present in this equation. Oh, yeah. I love both of those cards. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, it's uh, Dream Blunt Rotation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm very happy to announce Yargle and Multani, which <laughs> it doesn't have any abilities, but it literally has probably the best flavor text of any card I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, yes. ever here. So we're talking about one green, two black, and three, six all together, and 18 six. That is a oof. You get trample on that guy, that's a game over. That's a um, big boy. That's a big or boy. Just fling it. Just fling it. Just fling it. <laughs> fling uh, it with so, Zeotora. <laughs> frog spirit elemental legendary creature. I've heard much about you from my daughter, Multani Rumble. There was a time when I'd balk at your aid, Phantom, but she has shown me the merit in Urborg strain ways. There's a ribbit, replied Yurgle. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, for those who don't know, Yurgle is an evil demon frog. Mm -hmm. He was a demon who got turned into a tadpole, I think, by Belkzen. Be Bel Belkzen, right. one of the one of the ones that was Liliana, like that held Liliana's contracts way back when. So it was like the lieutenant of that guy. Um he got turned into a tad uh, tadpole or a fish or something and thrown into Urbog and a frog ate him and they fused together and he became a demon frog. So that's what it is. Hell of a uh, story. Yeah. Very, very fun stuff. I'm, I'm summarizing. I'm sure somebody's typing fast at me in the comments, but uh, <laughs> just fantastic. I love Multani is, you know, this wise ancient forest spirit. And he's like, ah, mm -hmm. yes, we shall join together in battle and blah, blah, blah. And Yargle's just, nonsense and it ends with ribbit incoherent ribbit incoherent <laughs> yeah confused <laughs> sounds um so good stuff there yeah i think I, th I think it's awesome i think people are just like this is like kind of one where it's like uh what, what were they talking about they were like this is uh the one set is like um they're saying it's almost like like marvel with like all the battles yeah everyone is coming through and, portals and, yeah and this one is um what did they I, I forget what they because I'm, I'm not good with the marvel movie names i forget what they compared this to but it's like one where they all team yeah up. everyone coming end, out through the yeah. portals yeah yeah they say this is kind of like end game where like all the fan favorites show up and you get your different depiction of your of your hero that you always loved previously and so now here's your yargle uh -huh. there's your drana there's your thalia there's your get rock as you see we have other fan favorites coming up galta um yeah Galta and Mavrin, we have a dinosaur vampire. I love this. Yes, I love it. This is this is great. Um, so <laughs> definitely a hefty casting cause. Big boy. <laughs> it is a Selesnia thing, and at first Selesnia vampire ever, maybe. Um, yes, I want to say yes. <laughs> so three colorless, two green, two white. We got a legendary dinosaur vampire. I, I think all these, except for the Gitrog one so far, have been rares. These, uh, these team creatures, if you will. Um, it is a 12-12 trample. So by default, that much for seven mana is technically stonks. Uh, but here's the additional value from it. Whenever you attack, choose one. Create a tap and attacking XX green dinosaur creature token with trample, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures. So no, no, it yeah. says other. So you don't just get another 12-12 automatically. Um Create X one one white vampire creature tokens with life link, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. So maybe like a yeah. like a rabble rousing deck or something. Yeah, you know that could be that could be kind of crazy. I, I um, feel like with Selesnia, it may be a little bit more feasible to ramp to this guy. I know he's a big seven, mm -hmm. like Catilda. Um, yeah, 
you know. D just r run a bunch of humans and then run this and then run yeah. Rabble Rousing. You know, even I don't know so, I mean, that. you have green, you have, you know, you have yeah. uh, Scrap Gorger, you have mm -hmm. a couple of mana rocks. So I feel like, I feel like it's not unreasonable to run this, especially yeah. if you're running tokens. Like it does support, it, it it does really feed into Selesnya tokens, which is kind of what they've been pushing with Selesnya for a while. They've just been like, hey, I do Selesnya mm -hmm. tokens. That's that's what it's about. You could, know, it could also do this as like a like a, a fight rigging target too, because you're running green yeah that'd be a that'd be a hell of a because then if you hit this off of fight rigging and then you attacked um then you would you would still get the triggers as soon as it hits because you attack after the the thing from fight rigging hits the board so that's kind of mm -hmm. cool you know um yeah obviously a heavy mana cost fun card it's gonna do cool things um is huge so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens I, I think it's i think it's fun and then whenever you just say the words dinosaur vampire like by default that's gonna like draw attention you know yeah yeah I, that's the biggest problems um uh yeah that's that's the other thing is i'm worried about removal man we're so rich in removal you know, yeah. I, I, I'm genuinely like, the, oh, look at all this amazing stuff. Kill, 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 kill. Of course. You know? Of course. I just. Everything that we've shown you gets, anyway. dies to go for the throat. And it, and it I, I know. You. That's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, I mean. <laughs> Two mana. Two mana. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> <sighs> I know. It's, it's a rough, it's a rough situation right now. So that's, yeah. that's my biggest concern. You're sticking me with all the garbage guys here. Look at this bastard. I'm not. Oh, you don't like all. this one? Oh <laughs> God! Listen, I was there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out my uh, Eldron speech. I was there three thousand years ago when Omnath had to be banned before it even got released because it was so goddamn broken. Okay, That's so insane. Omnath, in my in my opinion, has always broken. It's always this guy isn't so broken, but I just hate him. Um, I'm glad mm -hmm. he's completed. I don't know how you complete an elemental um, because you're kind of just a metaphysical concept. But I guess you, we can just complete anything now, which good, good for good for <laughs> good for Elish Norn. Um, you know, that's like it's kind of like saying we're completing the air. The air is now Phyrexian. Um, I don't really see how, don't but believe. yeah. So, but good for them. Um, uh, yeah, you didn't hear. You didn't know about Omnath. So Omnath came out on Arena, and it no, took over the Arena meta so bad that it mm -hmm. had to get banned in Standard even before it hit. Like by the time it hit store shelves, it was banned. Like they're talking about doing that with with Jin and or well, people are asking for it. Uh, yeah, with Jin in this cycle. Um, oh God, probably won't happen, but we'll see. So here's this guy. Uh, Omnath normally doesn't have. I like how they threw the black in there. Normally doesn't have black. Mm -hmm. He's normally every color but black. So they have the Phyrexian mm -hmm. ability for the black there. Yeah, because um, he's completed now. Yeah, He's completed, yeah. <clears throat> Legendary creature, Phyrexian Elemental. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. Interesting. Uh, cool. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You reveal a card that has three or more colored mana symbols on it. If you do, add three mana in any combination, combination of its colors and put it in your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it in your hand. Um... They're really pushing rainbow decks. I mean, we had, you know, Joe to the Unifier. I think that rainbow decks are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, probably only going to get better. Um, what I'm looking at that there is, and the, the question I, my, I, that my mind immediately asked, <clears throat> it was that unspent mana thing. Do you, do you lose it at the end of your turn or do you keep it in your pool just like always? Them. If you would I think lose, you keep it always. I think you just keep it. It just yeah, becomes yeah, black I, mana. Because at, at your end of turn, you would lose it, which means then it would just still be black mana. It would mana. become black mana. So he just generates mm -hmm. black mana. Yeah, he's just like like a constant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's noteworthy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Because um, then wouldn't it be the case you could tap a power stone for a colorless and then you would change phases then it would just go black basically so yeah if you if you had a bunch of power stones 
you could actually like tap them all on main one and then uh convert them into regular mana and then go to main two and cast an invoke despair <laughs> yes you could you could mana launder yes that's mana why launder. omnath gets banned like all the that. time is because he lets you do broken ass <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> so, he always manipulates you, yeah you basically just change the rules of power stones with on basically yeah and probably a bunch of other shit let's be honest that's just the first thing i thought of yeah is how do i how do i use this to cast invoke <laughs> that's the first thing my mind went i to. know well that's of course yeah that's <laughs> that's the that's the black way of thinking how many invokes can that's i cast way. off of this um yeah. so crazy card but yeah broken pro probably should just not even be a thing but you know here we are um here's this last one we have then moment of truth this is the <laughs> only common everything else has either been a rare i mean these lands you know coming down are uh commons as well but you know aside from that this is the only common spell uh moment of truth two mana instant colorless and a blue look at the top three cards of your library put one of them into your hand one into your graveyard one on the bottom of your library um do you see the flavor text there Yes, so I think that's why they added it because she is going to ascend. This is Elspeth's moment coming. to pick up a shotgun and become the Doom Slayer, as she was foretold. Ooh, freaking coming, boys! Um, wow. So she's killed gods. So she's not like she fought her way out of hell. She's killed gods. Mm -hmm. She is Elspeth. Listen, and uh, Ashiok gave. Elish Norn a nightmare of Elspeth. It's the only thing that Elish Norn is scared of. So mm -hmm. she it's the only thing that she could fear. Uh again, the Doom reference, the only thing they fear is you. So she's having a moment of truth here. Um, she is deciding what she wants to do. I think she's gonna enter some sort of avatar state and just start shit wrecking mm -hmm. people. Um it which like I like a, like emerging from something and about to leave also yeah. in art, you know what I mean? And there's feathers coming out from her, and we've always thought she has angelic ancestry because of what happened on New Capenna. Um, yeah. With Luxior yeah. and the other stuff that was going on. So she reacted to Halo weird, and it's she, so there might be some weird ancestry going there. So maybe she's a creature this time, then? She may be. She may be a planeswalker. She may be a creature. She mm -hmm. may jump back and forth. Um, yeah, they might do that kind of like hybrid thing, especially yeah. since like like Jin can become a saga maybe maybe elspeth can be creature and planeswalker i wouldn't be surprised if she is similar to like a or like meld the maybe? way that the maybe way that get the way that gideon used to be where every turn on on your combat phase gideon oh became you a make him a creature by like plus yeah. one okay. yeah he's yeah, like that, that makes sense because we don't have that and we don't have like a gideon fighting guy anymore and he was like the white yeah. hero um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so we might get her back in like that form of just an absolute final um uh she had one of the most by the way she had one of the most hardest fucking cards and flavor text ever did you ever see the card deicide no well it's called deicide which means to kill a god um, yeah yeah that's the name of the card and it's her stabbing a spear through a god's chest and killing it and the flavor text is it is done it is done. Yeah, I like that. That's some cold. Yeah, shit I, I right just there. I just looked it up. Exile target enchantment. If it's a god card, searches controller's graveyard hand. Oh, so not only is it a, is it a, um, get rid of that one. It's like a it's like a, a built in necromentia as well. Yeah, it's destroy all gods. She's a god wow. slayer. Wow. Listen, <laughs> Elish Norn. I mean, Elspeth is not a fucking. She is not a joke. She is not a chum. Yeah. Yeah. um so i'm interested in seeing where the story the story goes from here she mm -hmm. ran away with one of the silexes i think she's gonna go to the main root of that the seed core or like the evil tree mm -hmm. where that's completing everything and she's gonna <laughs> blow it up and it's gonna like do something crazy i assume um okay. I can see those weird phyrexian roots are coming through the hole if you if we look down here to the uh the okay. the mana section you yeah. see these weird phyrexian roots coming through sky holes that are infesting everything. There's like a yeah, and like taking over city shit. Yeah, so there's like physical manifestations of this invasion, 
Um, yeah. And it's all coming from the seed core, which is the evil kind of world tree that they made, um, okay. the invasion tree. So if Elspeth blows the Silex, the filigree Silex in there, um, it might all collapse. The whole thing might, you know, who, who the hell knows? Uh, what and notably, doing. these are your tapped lands that all gain a life. Looks like there's one for every yeah. Yeah. double color combination here. Yeah. We also have these aftermath ones. This is March of the Machines aftermath, which I guess is. So the is mini that going to be is that standard it's, legal then? Or it's the mini work? set. They said it's a mini set. Oh, that's right. It's the that's sixty what that set. Is. Okay. It's like yeah. sixty cards. Yeah, and then you open like five card boosters or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. I did. I, I, did, I did hear about that. Yeah. And I guess Kenrith dies. That's what this means. Apparently, Kenrith's royal funeral Kenrith. and the queen, uh, queen whatever her name is too. Um, yeah, it's gonna open up and say that. The um, we have the commanders too, and we also have some plane chase stuff, which is fun. I actually hope they put plane chase in <laughs> arena. What is plane chase? I haven't. So ever... plane chase is a very fun mechanic that they used to have a long time ago. That is different. Um. Uh. So basically, you have different locations. And it modifies the whole game. So uh, in Kamigawa, if you're on Tawashi in Kamigawa, modified creatures you mm -hmm. control have trample and whatever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Um, whenever chaos ensues, which means like something, I, I can't remember what ca when chaos ensues. Distribute three one one oh. counters. So like you jump around planes, like it it changes the way the game functions. Um, so how do you know that you're changing? planes or like on a plane or whatever uh i don't know i think there's like a dice i i can't really remember okay. but it's like a it's like a world enchantment it changes everything it okay like it, don't, it almost like turns whole... into like a it yeah. also turns into like like a freaking board game in a way basically it kind of it kind yeah. of games it up a little bit maybe um, what they'll do then is they'll do like the midweek magic events kind of like they're doing now where they give you the phyrexian art They'll do a different plane chase for each event. That's probably what they'll do when the set comes out. And probably. Arena. That's that's probably a good a good option for them. And because you know they've done things before where they slightly modify the game, and that's how they make it different. And that would be their way of modifying it. And they give you mm -hmm. art from whatever plane that might correspond to. Maybe maybe that's how they do it. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. I, I can't remember. Cool. I've done it. I did it a while ago and I knew about it a while ago, but it's probably been a while since I even considered it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. That's interesting. Um, and then we, we have the Kenra's Royal funeral. You want me to read it? Oh yeah. 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 Um, we can go for that. Uh, so two colorless white and a black legendary enchantment. Um, ETB exile up to two target legendary creature cards from your graveyard. You draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the greatest mana value among cards exiled this way. Legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card exiled uh, with the Kenrith's Royal Funeral. So you could blink it and make your exiled or make your legendary spells cost significantly less depending, you know what I mean, what you're doing. Notably, it is only one colorless and it doesn't say anything about you know changing that to colored mana so it looks like maybe two or three maximum four is probably the most actual value that you may get from this unless you just want to like want to use it to cast eldrazi's which that could be crazy yeah yeah <laughs> that could actually be kind of crazy you just that keep blinking it and, and slam free eldrazi's that would I don't be know. weird you know um i i guess that's a thing mm -hmm. you mill your eldrazi's and then you slam that and then you keep blinking it, and then you just cast your Eldrazi's for like two mana or less. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it's it's pretty cool. Um, you know, get your legends going. Yeah. Um, you know, get maybe Rodadrobix out. Who knows? You know, get some shenanigans going on. That would be good. Uh, yeah. I think story wise, we are going back to Eldraine soon, so this is probably going to set up some shenanigans mm -hmm. there. Um, okay. And also, I think the Kenris, the two kids, are the Planeswalkers as well. So their parents being dead oh, okay. uh, is going to change things. They were the ones that went to uh, they went to magic school. They went to fake Hogwarts. Oh, so they're like the like prototype Planeswalkers almost in a way. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like they're like the, 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 yeah, the they were the royal science. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Will and Roland. Well, that's them. They were re they were blue oh, and red. Will, blaze oh, Will, they, Will they, they're the they're royal. Red. Okay. The royal okay. science. I didn't yeah. know that. So um, yeah, then they went to magic school. I don't know if you were watching the uh, that magic weekly stream today or not. No, I but, did not um, get a chance to see it, unfortunately. Okay. Well, they announced uh, something else too. What did they announce? Oh. What did uh, they we're announce? gonna get some alchemy cards. Oh, in, like, a week from the day that we're recording this. Volcano, and, here um, we come. Yeah, and. I don't know. Maybe it makes me play Alchemy again. Maybe not. I have no idea. First, first, um, let's address. Let's address. Let's address your. Um, let's address your anti-Alchemy feelings right now. What's going on with Alchemy? What? What? Why? Why are you feeling so bad about Alchemy right now? Well, you know that I've given it everything I got. Yeah, you so, used to so, love Alchemy. Yeah. I still love it. It's just unplayable mm. with uh, Rusko and uh <clears throat> and uh crucius and there's the issue is that there aren't other decks that are as strong as that because they haven't put anything in alchemy that's as strong so mm. like even if i play that deck i'm just playing mirrors the whole time yeah. even if i sucked it up and said if you can't beat them join them i'm just playing grixis mirrors and it's not fun mm. it's it's a super grindy game it takes too long yeah, and then if, and then if you go to game three and you play for forty five minutes and you lose, it feels like shit. Mm. And I hate it, and I'm over it, and Oof. I'm just having a lot more fun in standard right now. Oof. So it's, it's tough I to don't... hear one of the biggest alchemy supporters come out with such a harsh alchemical stance. Yeah, and there's just too many. They they put in too many ways for that deck to be abused and mm -hmm. just borderline unbeatable i like i can beat the deck but it just takes so much and yeah. then you just play it again then the next match anyway it's just like all right man this is this yeah. is excessive yeah, yeah and yeah. it it went full on like historic light and basically yeah where you're if you're not I, playing the top two meta then what are you even doing yeah and then <clears throat> you know and then even in the play key you can't escape it so i really can't play alchemy like competitively anymore mm. um and the cards that I enjoyed in Alchemy, you know, the City Slugger Connoisseur, the Sanguine Brushstroke, I mean, those cards are talking about, those cards are over a year old, and they haven't really added cards that I enjoy that are just like straight mono black cards outside of those two for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, the, the Lonely End is like, okay, but Shoulder's Edict is better, and that's a standard card. Yeah. Um, painful bond is a decent draw spell, but that was that's still in one of the original alchemy sets. Baldur's Gate gave us a couple cards with like Viconia. Like Viconia is a decent alchemy card. I I, I like Viconia. Mm -hmm. Viconia is a good sideboard card. I, I will say that I have gotten great value from that. I know you, you of, turned me on to Viconia when we built our black deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outside of the outside of that though not a lot i just not I'm not feeling very supported as a mono black mage and it's just feeling like grixis as it is in i think uh explorer now grixis uh -huh. is pushed yeah. standard it's pushed obviously and alchemy it's pushed and it's just pushed everywhere uh -huh. and there's just yeah there's just too much support for it and then not enough support for things that could possibly beat it yeah and it just turns into everybody running the same deck, and it's just it, it becomes really stale really fast. Yeah, and, I get that. And this new set reshapes standards so much that I I've just kind of like grown to appreciate it. Okay, so right. I'm, I'm I'm just been having a really good time with standard this season, you know. For sure, I get that. I get that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, not to take it too far, but that is kind of how I feel. And <clears throat> I mean, some of these cards look cool. Um, that we're, that we're going to talk about here. Yeah. Um, here, I, I have I, them up I on the like, screen here on MTG yeah. Arena Zone. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Like, I, I like where it's going. Um, yeah. I, I, can, I can read the first one if you want. Sure. Um, quick Silver Lapidary, Blue and a Red, ECB, Conjure a card named Mox Opal into your hand. 
Mox Opal is one of the Moxes, so this has a zero cost. It is an artifact. You can tap it, um, add a mana of any color, but you can only do that if you have three or more artifacts. So there is like an is it artifact deck yeah. with like power stones and stuff that's yeah. kind of already a thing. So that's that's noteworthy, you know. We do have um, and, we do have spawning pod here, and, and that that yeah. is interesting that they're pushing it in a different direction. Spawning mm -hmm. pod, it could be very cool, or it could be another problem, much like um, mm -hmm. uh, what's that called, uh, Cabretti Revels, because this is another way to just get creatures onto the board very quickly. Uh, so this is an artifact, yeah. which means you can play pay it with power stones. Um, one green and two pay one, sacrifice a creature, seek a creature power with a mana value equal to one plus the sacrifice yep. amount of value and put that creature it's phyrexian and other types activate only as a sorcery so basically a phyrexian version of the hero's pyre which i used to use to great effect previously pyre of heroes yeah and it's it's a birthing potter as well uh, it's like baby birthing potter yeah yeah and then we had what we kind of predicted i think me and yeah. you may have predicted and this hey, in are they gonna do the other ones <laughs> Yeah, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm probably I might clip that and put it on Twitter and say where our prognosis was correct. This is the yeah. another set of the uh, of the Obliterator Vindicator four mm -hmm. mana five five power card of the Phyrexian. You want to take a take this one? Yeah, yeah, and and then they always kind of stay true to the color identity, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, Obliterator makes you sacrifice a bunch of shit. Uh, the Vindicator prevents damage, throws it right back in your face. <laughs> as, yeah. as, you know what I mean? Um, this guy, Menace, which is, uh, that's actually uh, somewhat common within red, so that's mm -hmm. that's uh, that's been a thing. Yeah. This is the Phyrexian Harvester. Four, uh, four red, straight up, and it is a 5-5. Mm -hmm. five, five. It, is, it is a Mythic, which I believe the all of, all of those, um, those horrors of the Phyrexians have been Mythics. Yeah. Um, and they all have the one combat ability. Um, Vindicator has flying. Uh, Obliterator has trample. Our Harvester has menace. Yeah. So uh, when he's dealt damage, and, and they all pertain to when they are dealt damage. Yes. So when he's dealt damage, seek that many non-land cards. At the beginning of your next end step, discard those cards. Mm. Decent. And I see it being used and abused with crucius because you can trigger the, the 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 requirement to discard those cards you can have crucius ability go on the stack above that mm. so you would discard one of the cards that you're getting anyway and then you would seek one of lesser or higher mana value actually into your hand mm. so you can kind of like double dip off of the harvester's ability by using crucius and it would just be it would just require the lightest splash of black. Mm. So I see that being abused automatically. But yeah. it, it requires a heavy, a heavy identity towards red. And if you're doing four red, you probably can't play invoke. So that's a thing. Probably not. I yeah. I I'd say you could probably get away with this in Gruel or mm -hmm. You could probably because of the just mana rocks, you could get away with it in Gruel or um, mm -hmm. uh, Rakdos. Boros, maybe, may ah, Boros, you're not getting that many mana rocks. I mean, uh, Gruel or Rakdos, I definitely see a sign for it, but honestly, mm -hmm. comparatively, if we look at, I mean, I think it definitely goes Obliterator, Vindicator, Harvester. Like, yeah, yeah, he's definitely probably weaker he's probably the weakest three. one, yeah. Yeah, um, it, it's great to have them. Let's let's say that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm interested in seeing. I'm, I'm I'm interested in seeing what is the green one. What is the blue one? Mm -hmm. I'm sure the blue I, one I, is going to have hexproof, indestructible, and your play. <laughs> well, it takes that much damage for that proud. many turns. Uh, your opponent can't. Your opponent can't cast spells. <laughs> Counter all of their spells for the rest of their game yeah, every time you take many, damage. For as many damage as it took, it, you, they can't cast spells for that many rounds. <laughs> that's balanced, yeah. right? That's blue. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a reasonable blue card for in, in 2023 from uh, from Hasbro. Yeah. Uh, so there's that, and then um, 
maybe the green one is like maybe maybe that one has hexproof, you know, yeah. or it has like uh, I don't I don't even know what other because one one of one already has trample, so that's probably not they're they're not going to do two a trample. I would probably say maybe the green touch? the green one might have reach. Reach is reach is one thing that reach. green also has. It just feels like reach isn't as strong of an ability. <laughs> though, it's it, like, it isn't. It isn't as strong. It's as a defensive ability. You know, FS yeah. One. So like maybe it's like death touch or hex proof or could have it could have hex proof. Yeah. Um, yeah. It could have. Green does have some haste. Mm. True. Could have haste occasionally. Now, a green does. one with haste actually. Green with haste when it's like I dare you to block this. Mm -hmm. That's that's true to the identity of green. I, I think that, that I think a Phyrexian like a Phyrexian um Phyrexian uh birther, let's call it, which whenever it takes mm -hmm. that much damage, you create that many two two uh Phyrexian fungus tokens. Oh, for green. Yeah, that yeah. would be a good version of green. You know. I so see something like that. you figure if, oh, if I'm blocking this, he's just going to crap out a bunch of different, you know, it's just going to crap out a bunch of tokens. So that might be a fun one, especially if it has haste. So, you know, on turn four, you're running in with a five, five. Uh, That's what I'm saying. And if you're not going to kill it, if I'm going to block it, he's just going to build his board. If he's running mm -hmm. a broad green, that might be cool. Uh, we'll have to see. I'd like them to see the full, finish the full cycle. I know that the, the subreddit was salty because they said, oh, now we're never going to get the full cycle of obliterator type cards in paper because they put them in alchemy. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. And I'm like, well, play alchemy then. <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope that with basically making them say that or making them do that, if that's what they want to get that they also in turn make alchemy playable. Yeah. They also stated today on their announcement that they did not expect to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that they did not expect to have any rebalances at this time. I know. I, I think the biggest so. problem is they need to start the rebalancing. Yep. It's the whole point of, of the format. Yeah. So. They need to and start. And we said it a bunch, a bunch of times, but and they're not doing it. We wanted to let it go. We wanted to try to keep making decks that beat it, and it's just like too much of an uphill battle at this point. When I can just play another format that's like seems a lot more reasonable, you know? Yeah, they need to nerf some of these. I, I wish they just I, all I want them to do is cut the highest heads. If something mm -hmm. is if something is there, you know, Crucius, uh, Rusko, mm -hmm. uh, Cabretti mm -hmm. Revels. Those are the ones that are the highest. They're 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 prevailing everywhere. Cut their heads off. That's it. Just lop them. Yeah. You know, just lop their just cut them down. Nerf them a little bit. You know. And, yeah, and one of the biggest things with Rusko is you could legit just say that he doesn't put a counter on the midnight clock, and that he doesn't gain and drain when you cast a non-creature spell, and he would literally be fine. Yeah, I mean, you could slow him down. Just add add two to his mana cost. You could do that, and it would slow yeah, the game. Yeah, you could also do that. It would tempo the game down a whole bunch. I mean... It's just the whole turn three Crucius turn for Rusko is... Yeah, that's that's the thing, is th that, that Grixis combo is... And then you're ramping is... that whole time in, in addition to it. It's just too much. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, so... uh, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I mean that that's literally they could say uh all three of those have one more in their mana cost and it would slow the tempo of the game that mm -hmm. much. We're taking one yeah. off their toughness and adding one to their mana cost. And Yeah, or with with Crucius and you could say it with making it more expensive. You let him you, you let him seek the cards and do all that stuff, but you just don't give him a treasure every time. Yeah, yeah, that would be true too. You yeah. know what I mean? They're they're so that you you keep the mana cost the same. You don't interfere with the tempo of the game but you t you seriously detract from the brokenness of the of game. course of course yeah you know? yeah so that's something to consider um but i at this point i don't even know if they're gonna do it so i'm just i'm just kind of over alchemy until until something's done <clears throat> or until they they make black cards that are as strong but even then then they then those decks that are that are benefiting right now from the Rusko and Crucius would just put those cards in the deck too. 
So I really don't know how you come back from it by just adding more cards mm -hmm. without rebalancing something. Yeah. I just don't know how that happens. So for now, I'm just going to hang out in standard and I'm having a good time. I, I want I want a paper event in standard. Mm -hmm. My standard, you know, the it's the same deck I use on arena. I'm satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. It's given I'm getting I'm getting out of it what I want to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still and, an unsolved format, I think, in standard. Yeah, and I, I think there's a lot to do. This poison, there's a lot of different builds. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm having fun in standard too. I'm I'm hanging around in I'm hanging around in diamond. I just lost a bunch of ranks due to people <laughs> just I, I, all I run. Man, <sighs> control decks, bro. Like, yeah. Um, come on, man. It's tough just all the time with the control anyways i just lost i was i was almost diamond two i'm now diamond four again i'm not in a hurry uh you know yeah I, that's fine it, it's 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 a matter of i can i grind mono red or mono black and just get there in two days yeah i can but i'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm milling about so um and i think the last announcement before we bring it to a close we didn't really get a lot of uh interest in this but we want to gauge people's interest because i'm definitely interested um which is this last thing that i'm gonna put up on the screen here alchemy it was here yeah. but we also have shadows over innistrad remastered mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. what's going on there <laughs> are you gonna is okay so what the one question i had is is it um is that alchemy or what is it historic how are they doing it it's gonna be historic and explorer okay uh, this is them slowly introducing the set that are included in the Pioneer format to yeah. make Explorer Pioneer. Okay, so they're trying to make Explorer Pioneer. Yeah, and okay. that, that's been the goal the whole time. It's just how do we go about getting the cards on Arena yeah. in the correct manner? So what they've done now and we won't like necessarily go over all these cars, but we'll yeah, if you yeah. see we have them up here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what they're doing is, you know, they started with anthologies just to kind of get enough Start support filling them out. Yeah. For, for the archetypes in the format to make them viable enough to play. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And obviously make some money. Well, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. um, or make you burn some wild cards, get money uh -huh. elsewhere. Uh -huh. Now you need more wild cards. You do this, uh -huh. you do that, whatever. Yeah. Um, but now this is going to be an actual set an actual block remastered set you're going to be able to buy the packs you're going to be able to draft which is kind of cool too okay so i and from what i understand this is and somebody can correct me if i'm wrong i'm happy to be wrong here um this is the first set in pioneer that is legal okay so the idea is that we go you know, we go all the way back as far as we go back from the first arena set. What I, I'm not really sure what that is, but whatever that is, obviously, uh, explore illegal. Excellent. Okay, perfect. So we're we're gonna go from Innistrad up to Ixalan now. I think is the goal, so that Pioneer is fully on on the game. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So and then that gives you a way to practice Pioneer. Um, on arena without having to get all the cards in MTGO, which I also think is great. So, and that also allows for like pioneer tournaments and you know a, a lot. And you saw the the pro tour. You know this last event was drafted yeah. pioneer. That's yeah. a that's a very very competitive format. Wizards wants that to be a format that is a staple of pro tours. Yeah, they want draft pioneer and modern to be yeah. your pro tour staples. Yeah. So with remastered, does that mean that not every card is coming? It's a select, like main I, cards. I think that is part of it, um, and I'm not sure how they're going to do it because remastered seems to mean something different every time. Okay, because <laughs> you know we had Dominaria remastered. Yeah, and that didn't come to Arena. That was a paper only thing. Yeah, um, kind of a cash grab. But I mean, there were crazy valuable paper cards there, you know. Um, so remastered. Maybe they're just calling it remastered because they're releasing it again. Yeah. Um, 
but they want it they say that they want this to be as close to the pioneer format as possible which means you have to at least bring us all of those cards yeah and the the point of explorer is that there's no digital only cards mm. so you're not nerfing and rebalancing stuff okay so historic you're is going to be the digital mm -hmm. format and explorer isn't or pioneer yeah, or whatever explorer is your paper as of right now there's no digital only cards that are legal in explorer yeah. kind of like standard you mm -hmm. know and it's either banned or it's not there's no nerfing in either of those but yeah. there is nerfing and rebalancing in historic and alchemy and that's kind of what that's for okay so, so i can see that we have sorry to jump in we have ixalan sure. and dominaria mm -hmm. and amoncat remastered already with the hour of devastation on there so mm -hmm. shadows of innistrad eldritch moon and kaldash and aether revolt would be the ones coming up that the would <laughs> innistrad to hour of devastation would be shadows of innistrad eldritch moon kaldash and aether revolt mm -hmm. uh would be coming up pioneer does include yep. all the way back to return to ravnica even the oh Tarkir sorry it's ravnica. Set. Yep, there yeah yeah so Ravnica's they would have the to original. they'd have to keep going back but I think the remaster might be Innistrad with Eldritch Moon, the the staples in it. They might do a. I think we've already had the Kaladesh and the Amoncat stuff in there, because mm -hmm. I think we have a Kaladesh remastered, and I think we have an Amoncat remastered already in. So we might have yeah. a Zendikar, and then we would might have a Tarkir, then we might have a Nyx, and then we might have mm -hmm. a Return to Ravnica. So that might be the, yeah, another Ravnica would the, be pretty cool. The slow build of uh, of the Pioneer format in in this and from what i understand the big thing uh that eldritch moon um contributes to the pioneer format are, are lands mm. so what you might see is that with this remastered they just say hey this is innistrad remastered and the remastered part is just that we give you eldritch moon lands mm. yeah yeah that that could be part of it i'm not yeah. sure if there's not format staples in there yeah yeah and i personally don't play a ton of pioneer but it is something i'm i'm working on getting into after this past weekend so. i have a pioneer vampire that's mostly um that's what i played a lot it just it's pioneer by accident just because it's mostly in Estrad vampires it's a madness stuff. deck yeah yeah and it yeah, has a really yeah. a lot of good synergy i don't know how competitive it is but um i mean I there were some good ones and there's version. there's some really some really good soren planeswalkers from back in that set oh that yeah for too, sure you know I remember I I had one of the Innistrad Sorens and he was he was a beast man. Mm -hmm. Well, just <laughs> he was the a beast in that time. I think he'd still be a beast now. The madness, uh, the madness. Some of the madness synergies were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like that where you discard cards, Olivia. I like the madness mechanic. It's something I I would like to be brought back, and uh, I think I've said it before. I'd like, like to see madness in standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. I did like madness so. A lot of stuff yeah. coming. I think Arena is kind of in a healthy place. A lot is growing mm -hmm. in. I'm glad it's being heavily supported, so it doesn't look like we're going to be out of a job anytime soon. Um, so that's <laughs> no. the good news. We should be good. Yeah, and the, and the I council. Think, I think will, they know that that's that's their future. You know, the the, the council will soldier on for sure. We'll be yep. here to cover Absolutely. it all. Yep. Um, a lot of updates, a lot of changes, a lot of stuff going on. We're here for it, and we're here to keep you updated. If you guys have questions? Let us know. If you guys want to talk about, you know, what you're excited about, feel free to leave a comment. We would love to hear what, you know, what you guys are looking forward to. Or if you think that there's something coming to Arena that we didn't talk about enough, let us know. And we'll uh, we'll we'll dive deep into it as, as we need to. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and join the council. We want to hear from you. We want to get your feedback. But you can only get Absolutely. that if you join the council. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Um but yeah i think we've covered pretty much everything there's a lot of news came out today so we had to go over a lot mm -hmm. yeah um, kind of covered like a little bit of three different things and condensed it mm -hmm. into a regular sized episode for you guys yeah. so hopefully <laughs> we didn't overlook anything and hopefully we covered it in enough detail and if you have questions or if we missed stuff please let us know absolutely um that all being said uh hope you enjoyed this one make sure to like leave a comment and we're gonna call this episode of the council to a close. I've been Jay Villeneuve great with me as always is Num Skull, twitch.tv slash num underscore skull underscore. He'll stream every night at 4 30 a.m. is when he goes live. <laughs> um so just yeah be watch out for that. It'll be it'll be right right at you know right before dawn. 
And uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. We're calling this one right here. Good night, everyone. Take care, guys.